The world's tallest freestanding mountain, Mount Kilimanjaro is the highest peak in Africa at 5,895 meters. If we made it to the summit, this would be by far the highest we've ever hiked. In this film, we take on the Lamosha route, an eight-day itinerary with a surprisingly comfortable camp setup. Oh, it's hot! Even though our camp felt like a five-star experience, this would not be an easy trek. <laughs> Often used as the training ground for Mount Everest, it isn't to be taken lightly. Half of all people who attempt to summit fail. It pushed us physically and emotionally. It's not worth it for me if I'm going to feel like this the whole way up. This is a film about perseverance, patience and humility. Join us as we attempt to summit the roof of Africa. As we approached the foot of Kilimanjaro, we were surprised to see a bus full of people driving up ahead of us. Our guide Ola explained that this was our team of porters and that it was going to take a team of 21 just to take the two of us up the mountain. Meet the A-Team. Throughout the trip, the A-Team would go above and beyond carrying our camping gear, building and de-rigging camp, setting up our shower, yes, a shower, our toilet, our home, and a mountain kitchen, which would fit into just one tent and feed all 23 of us. Steamy. <laughs> the whole operation was truly impressive and the team's energy relentless. And so it begins. This is day one, the easy day. We're just doing the afternoon, warming ourselves up into it, getting acclimatized. But yeah, very, very exciting. And pole pole means slowly, slowly. And that is the name of the game. Yeah, and slow so and steady wins the race. We uh, are going painfully slow, <laughs> but we've been brief that this is part of the whole experience. Because that's the whole point. You need to acclimatize and go up gradually so that you get used to the different altitude rather than sprinting up and then suddenly finding yourself out of breath. <coughs> As we reached the first camp, the A-team were there to greet us. As we'd find out, they do this every day, however long the day is. I have to say that we slept very well last night, but I do think maybe we're being lulled into a false sense of security because I know that not all nights are going to be as easy as that. Well, I hope so. We should. It's such a comfortable bed. <laughs> no, but the day of the summit, that's uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, that's the one. We've yeah. got one one day of pain and every other day. Should be good. Should be we, good build up and warm up. Yeah, good sleep. Oh, so nice. With green trees and live all around us, it didn't feel like we were on a giant volcano. So that is day two done. The first two days were really about kind of setting a pace, poly poly, going slowly, climatizing, getting used to the layout of the camp, meeting everyone. And tomorrow it starts to get a bit more serious uh, in terms of the hiking and the trekking and the hills we've got to climb. Yeah, washi washi. Yeah, washi washi time. Uh, Sante sana. Karim sana. Morning. This is, we're not going to give you a full tour, but we just got our water delivered to wash our faces. And this is the first morning that we actually have a sight of the mountain that we're climbing. Hey, it looks s -s scarily big when you see it that big and it's that far yeah. away. And it's cold. And it's very and it's cold, cold already. And we have a lot of elevation to cover, so yeah. we freeze up. My hands are numb holding the camera here. 
So this monitors blood oxygen and heart rate and they use it to assess how you are coping with the change in altitude and you have this measured twice a day. Thankfully the sun came out and as the morning slowly warmed up, we slowly defrosted. And by the time we stopped for breakfast, our layers had started to come off. The A-team kept passing us, carrying the camp up as they went, and spirits were high. Cold fog enclosed the path before opening up to reveal a beautiful canyon. I love the feeling of being so close to camp. It's just so nice to know we're gonna have a hot lunch, we're gonna get to relax. Oh, it's so nice to be home. We can tell our tents and we can tell the A-team because they're getting ready to dance and sing for us. Amba. Amba. Every time we arrive to camp, we get this incredible greeting. It's so special. They love it, the energy they have. This is so nice, how this space, even though it keeps moving, it just feels like home, like that just, that's a room. The van life. It's like van life. Look at it, it's just such a welcoming sight. In the harsh mountain environment, it gives such a warm feeling to have a little safe, comfortable space to call home. So I wanted to give you a little tour of what we have here. Super comfy, extra warm sleeping bags on top of three inch foam, on top of this raised bed. It really just feels like you're home. The guys at Summit Africa always sort us out with hot water bottles right before we go to bed so we're nice and toasty. And actually, you also get a proper pillow, which is a game changer because then you can just have a proper nice rest and the porters they carry our bags as well so that when we come in and we're tired and we're sweaty they've set up the tent and they've got our bags here and last but not least the fact that our tent means that we can stand up we can stretch after the long day's hike is a game changer it's just so comfy and yeah all these extra little pockets and stuff you just can't beat it. Great quality tent, windproof, waterproof, all of the things that you expect from just high quality service. So that is our room tour. We even have a hot shower. Who could ask for more? Then I tell you when I want water. Yes. Then I tell you when to stop with water. Okay, perfect. Okay. Best of luck. Thank you. Ready? Perfect. <laughs> oh, the wind. Don't do that. When it's your turn, don't do that. Right, it's my turn to go in. And <laughs> I am very much looking forward to it because apparently it's 10 out of 10 shower, so. I can't believe I'm having a shower Perfect. at 4,200 meters. Okay. Stop, okay. Finish. Okay. So I'm starting to feel quite ropey. Headache has gotten worse, so I'm taking my Panadol and hoping for the best. Fingers crossed. Mm. The difficult thing about climbing Mount Kilimanjaro isn't necessarily the hiking itself, the trekking itself. 
It's more about the altitude and how you acclimatize to the altitude. I, luckily, am fine at the moment. I'm not suffering anything. But Tanya has just gone to take a nap. She's got a pretty bad headache. She's taken some painkillers and she felt a bit sick for a while. Our guide, Ola, said that walking slowly at 5,000 meters plus puts the same amount of strain on the body as running at sea level. I'm not sure if he's exaggerating. Luckily, I hadn't lost my appetite. How are you feeling this morning? Oh, so much better. I woke up without a headache and the only thing to report is like tingly hands and tingly face which I've been feeling every day since I've taken the acclimatization, acclimatization tablets and um, yeah, here's hoping that I have acclimatized at least at this level. Yeah, good. I had the best night's sleep I've had the entire time. Wow. Yeah, I just slept straight through. The, having the toilet right outside was, <laughs> sort of. that was an upgrade <laughs> to Santa. It was brilliant, because I went in the middle of the night and it didn't take that much effort. Wow. Nothing quite like porridge and ginger tea to start the day. Mm. Pole pole, we went. So today is day four and it really feels like we're walking on the moon or on Mars or something because there is no vegetation at all, it's all rocks and yeah, we're going higher and higher and today is a very important day. Iveta, why is today so important? Today is very important because we are hiking high to sleep lower. And that is important because that helps us acclimatize, right? Yes. So we're going to push our bodies, we're going to go really high and see how our bodies react to that altitude and then we're going to go back down and assess because we've got to keep going up and up in the following days. Look at this! No, I was not expecting a little tea break here. Wow. This is a little bonus unexpected tea break oh, thanks to Babu. Oh. And on we went stopping at 4,600 meters for a break and acclimatization. And I was starting to feel the effects. I can feel the headache just like here and it's pounding. It's like as soon as we stop? Yeah, as soon as we stop, because I guess I get distracted walking, I don't know. But yeah, I, this should see me right, hopefully. <laughs> So I've just been informed by Ola that tomorrow morning we are climbing that wall and it's the wall that everyone on the internet swears is like deadly and you can die from but he promises me that actually it's fine unless you're scared of heights, which I am. So we will see how tomorrow goes. As the sun went down, the moon came up and camp was treated to a beautiful evening light. So for anyone who might be interested in our tech setup, this is a USB power block and a USB drone charger because obviously there's no power out here on the mountains but we, we don't want to be able to fly the drone and we don't want to run out of batteries. Same of course with the main camera batteries, USB powered. So we've got four of these and that should see us through. Jumbo. Jumbo. Oh, it's so busy in here. Oh, yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Oh my god, it's so steamy. Yes. You're Look at the lens. Oh, the lens is all steamed oh, up. Is... 
Ready? Yeah, getting ready now. Ready to be ready. I'm actually excited. Oh, you're a bit nervous. Here we go. We're climbing the wall. And I hope that my fear of heights doesn't get the better of me. At least you'll die looking the nerdiest you've ever looked. <laughs> Good, there we are. Something to remember me by. It turns out that the Baranka wall was absolutely fine as long as you take it slow. Nothing like what we encountered in the Dolomites. We are halfway through the Baranka wall and just to give you a little bit of scale, over there is where our camp was, where we slept last night. And over here is proof that we've slept high above the clouds. How's everyone feeling? Good. Yeah, everyone is just doing amazing. Yay! We're doing well. Good pace. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, let's keep going. Yeah. It was much windier at the top than expected. Very, very windy. So we huddled behind a rock to take shelter for breakfast which consisted of pancakes, porridge, and of course, ginger tea, which is supposedly good for altitude sickness. As we trekked further away from civilization, we were at the mercy of the unpredictable conditions of the mountain. Hot sun, cool air, and endless paths. After a bit of a scramble, we arrived at camp, nestled in the clouds under Kilimanjaro's peak. The team have definitely kept us well fed and one of the reasons that we're able to have fresh avocado salad as an example on day six yeah. is because they have done a replenishment and 95% of companies that tour Kilimanjaro they don't do this it's actually very few so to have freshies is an absolute luxury fresh vegetables oh, and chips obviously <laughs> oh you gotta have a balance right How do you sleep with Tanya? Very well, thank you very much. You sleep okay? Yes, very Everything well. Everything is okay? Everything, Everything is great. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Good ah. news. Thank See you. you. Later. See you later. The sixth day began with another early morning, the last day before summiting tomorrow. My only real altitude symptom has been that I need to hold my nose, or cover my nose when I go to the toilet, let's say. Let's put it that way. I think you can use your imagination to understand that. <laughs> and my body clock seems to have timed itself so that I need to go exactly at six o'clock in the morning, which is the time that we're supposed to be reaching summit tomorrow. So we'll see how that goes. So we have four or five hours of uphill to our final camp before the summit. And it's starting to feel real now. Looking at that, it doesn't look too bad, but I think it's deceiving because we know how far away it is and how high it is and how exhausting tomorrow is gonna to be. I think it looks terrible. I Do mean, you? I think it, it looks really high. Well, maybe, but it, I think it's even higher than it looks. That's the, that's the problem. <laughs> So 
So this is Barafo 1, which is the normal base camp for when you're summiting. But luckily, we have a permit to stay at base camp 2, which is up all of that. So that means that we get to do this in the daylight rather than this being the first thing we have to tackle early in the morning. We save ourselves an hour tomorrow morning. And it's only 1% of people who climb get the permit to stay at Barafo 2, which is the second base camp up there. So that's really good news. Makes tomorrow a little bit easier, even though it's still gonna be the hardest day of our lives. Yeah, all thanks to Summit Africa. All thanks to Summit Africa. The final stretch to base camp and we could feel the air getting thinner and each step felt a little heavier. We began to pass people on their way down from the summit. Oh, thank you. Good job. Thanks. Well done. Are you heading up tomorrow? Tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, good luck. Yeah, good thank luck. <laughs> oh, it's so nice seeing people come down from the summit. Some people are absolutely exhausted, but people are elated and it makes me really, like I want that feeling. So that's, it's giving me the determination to push tomorrow. So here we are, we have arrived at the final camp for the summit. And you can see the summit pretty much just there, there's a bit of clouds. And that is what awaits us tomorrow. Five and a half, six hours of just straight up through the night. We wake up at one o'clock in the morning and go for it and hopefully we're going to get there in time for sunrise. This was it, our final camp before summit day. Sitting at the foot of the peak, staring up at what we had to face tomorrow. Upon arriving, we prepared the kit we take for the summit hike. Everything had to be signed off by Ola to confirm it was appropriate for the harsh conditions of 5,995 meters. My lucky boxes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very important. Mm -hmm. Very important. We are having a little mid-afternoon nap because it's important for us to get as much sleep as we possibly can before tomorrow because we're getting up at stupid o'clock in the morning and going to be hiking for five, well we say we're hiking for five hours but that's just to get to the top but then we've got to come back down and then keep going all the way down back to oxygen so that our bodies can start recovering so it's going to be a 12 hour day I should think minimum um and then when we add filming onto that probably 14 15 hours so it's gonna be really long we're gonna be exhausted so any opportunity we get now to rest we have to take see you in a bit yeah I wonder if we'll actually sleep just woke up from my nap feel like I could have Slept through the whole night from there, to be honest, but we'll just have a quick bit of dinner, then try and go back to sleep at about half six-ish. But look at this wonderful, wonderful view. Ola gave us one last safety briefing and a motivational talk over dinner, and it was all beginning to feel very real. Waking up around midnight for summit day, and Adam was suddenly hit by the symptoms of altitude sickness. <coughs> he said if you throw up, it might make you feel better, and that it's normal to feel sick. Yeah, not making me feel better yet. Okay. Okay. <sighs> This was the first sign of any symptoms I'd had for the whole hike. I could stand up without feeling dizzy. I couldn't drink water without being sick. And I was feeling very sorry for myself. <coughs> it's just gonna get worse going up. Like, but at this point, I care more about like, looking after my body than getting to the top, I think. It's just such a shame, but. If I'm gonna feel like this all the way up, it's not worth it. I'm not gonna enjoy it enough. And I'm just gonna feel worse and worse. And <sighs> Yeah, I think I'm calling it. Okay. If I'm sick immediately like that, again. <sighs> Ola tried to reassure me that I'd be able to do it, but my mind was already made up. If I felt this bad here, sitting down, then the higher I got, the worse I'd be. My body was just screaming at me to rest. 
I'm gonna do it for the two of us. Mm. We just left camp and we're leaving without Adam, which feels really weird. But I said to him that I'd do it for the two of us. Um, so I've got Ola. Yes. He's taking us. Yes. And Jackson. Yes. So I'm in good hands. So wish me luck as it feels emotional to go by myself. So I hope I do it. <laughs> The night was cold, the climb was steep. I kept telling myself, one step at a time. Pole, pole. You can do this. have been trekking for three hours now and we are now at 5,500 meters which is above Everest Base Camp and I'm feeling really accomplished because this is only our second break so the thing that's kept me going is knowing that um, I'm doing this for Adam, I'm doing this for the team at Summits Africa and I'm doing this for myself to prove that I can do it and I can reach the top. It's 5.45 and the sunrise colours are starting to come up and I can't think of a better motivation than being high above the clouds and seeing that horizon. It's absolutely incredible. It just gives you the surge of energy. <sighs> So we are just stopping for hot drinks and then after that we keep uh, pushing to the, top, to the top of the mountain. Roughly 45 minutes to go from this point that we are to the top of the mountain. Oh amazing. Great. Oh my goodness. So this is our third break. It's taken us approximately four hours to reach 5,756 meters. We're now at Stella Point. But that's not the real peak. But the last hour I found really difficult. I could really feel the effects on my lungs and every step felt difficult. So yeah, Kilimanjaro is no joke. <sighs> We're almost there. I can see the crowds and I can see the sign the famous sign that tells you that you've made it. <sighs> Can't believe this. <sighs> Ooh, now I see you. What goes up must go down and that's exactly what we've been doing for the last three hours. I've also been using that time to reflect on the lessons that climbing Mount Kilimanjaro has taught me. And the first one is that this concept of pole pole, just taking things slow, putting one foot over the other and no matter what your goal is, just as long as you're making progress and you're going at your own pace, you will reach the top, you will reach your goal. And secondly, no one ever reaches the summit or their goal without the help of others. And that can be your family, your friends, your community. But for me, in this instance, it has been through the people and the staff of Summit Africa the porters, the guides, the cooks, and of course my beloved Babu Rama, our waiter. So really, it is a team effort and I hope that this has inspired you to 
go after your own goals, whatever that is. <sighs> and I can see camp. It's right there. There it is.